So from 1995, the internet became dynamic. Prior to 1995, the internet was there, but that is between 1993 to 1995, it was static in nature. So the difference between the static and dynamic internet is, for example, uh, your uh, academic results are announced. Immediately, we will open a link on internet and try to uh, to an application. The application will process and display the result instantly. That is what dynamism on internet. Uh, if you go to static, that is prior to 1995, the same scenario where results are announced and you try to browse on the internet. So you click a link, a link gets opened and you provide the registration number or something, hall ticket number, then the application will not process the results immediately. It will display a message that uh, your results would be announced after 48 hours. That is what the calculations were not dynamic, they were static. It just takes the input and process it and it uh, use the output at some other point. So that was the major difference between the static and dynamic internet. So nowadays dynamic, that is dynamic internet we can see because Java is present in that internet. Likewise here in from 1995. So we can clearly say that the internet got its, got its significance, got its dynamism only because of Java technology. It gets its popularity as internet uh, developed parallelly. So they are interdependent their significance. So Java is popular because internet was there. Internet is popular because Java was there during their stress. So nowadays also both the technologies, internet and Java are very high in demand. They are very popular. Mm -hmm. That is what uh, the Java gave uh, some life to internet. And when we are back to the Sun Microsystems timeline. So we have seen Java. Java then this Java was released with uh, j some version name that is Java 1.0 version. They introduced some components in Java. Uh, for example, the clusters and interfaces which we shall discuss in our upcoming sessions. So those are the two components present in Java, classes and interfaces. Mm -hmm. Classes and interfaces. So there were around 200 classes in uh, Java 1.0 version. Later on, research and development went. So research and development, even today also the research and development goes day to day. Day to day new components are being developed and released. 1998, they came out with version Java 1.1 version. So here there were around 1500 classes and interfaces. So likewise the timeline went and Java 1.2 released. So Java 1.2 released. The same Java 1.2 is also known as Java 2. Java they have considered the decimal number into account and they have renamed the Java 1.2 to Java 2 version. Then Java 1.3, Java 1.4 came into picture, then Java 1.5. So here again the market demanded a name for this Java. They looked into the version over there which they have uh, name given to Java 1.2 version. So here, to give a new name to the Java 1.5, they considered that a 2 into a count and they tried to give as Java 3. Java 3. If you look over there, Java 3. Java 3 is the name and Java 1.5 is the actual version. So 3 and 5 are not compatible. So they thought of giving Java 4. Again, if you look there, Java 4 and actual version is Java 1.5, so which is not relevant. 
So instead they went for a decimal number that is 5 and they named it as Java 5 version. Likewise Java 1.6 which is known as Java 6 version. Then Java Java 7 which is presently available in the market. So presently available in the market. This is the latest version. Mm -hmm. Then Java 1.8 is planned to release. So planned to release this year, 2014. Actually they plan to release in 2014 summer. Uh, for some reason it is postponed and it is not at release. Mm -hmm. So that is how Java uh, evolved into the world. And if you observe here, the person who handled that uh, green project team, James Gosser of Java Program Language. Father of Java Program Language. Then, let us get into the next question that is why Java is. So to get into the features of Java, features of Java, it is compiled and interpreted. Then it is robust and secure. Then it is platform independent, mm -hmm. object oriented. and dynamic and extensible multi-threaded and interactive high performance so, so these are the features of the Java so when you get into the compiled and interpreted, generally the programming languages will have either a compiler or interpreter to check the grammar and give the result. Whereas our Java programming language has both the compiler and interpreter. So let us get into JVM architecture. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. So Java virtual machine program in a notepad or an editor. So this Java program is nothing but source code. This source code is compiled compiled by the JVM. So compile that is a compiler. A compiler where we denote it with Java C. Java C. So a compiler will act on the source code and this compiler will generate a bytecode. So here bytecode. And if you observe here the source code where the Java instructions are written, this source code file, I am just giving a name for this file. The file name would be like uh, abc.java abc.java mm -hmm. now this file is compiled by the compiler that is java c compiler and it generates bytecode here so it generates bytecode this bytecode is an intermediary code so bytecode or intermediary code both with the same this bytecode actually helps uh, a faster in performance and uh, to get that the platform independent nature to Java. So this bytecode is then executed by the, interpreted by the interpreter. So here we call it as JVA Java over there. It's a command. So here the interpreter comes into picture. This interpreter would act on that bytecode and then generate the result, the final result. Here 
the byte code whatever is generated would be stored in a file that is, is the same file name which we have named for the source code A B C and it would have an extension dot plus extension. So your Java program is compiled with the Java C compiler, then intermediary code is gen generated that would be stored in ABC dot plus file. Further, a Java interpreter would act on this byte code and use the result. Here the compiler and interpreter together are parts of the JVM. So that is the JVM architecture where your source file Java instructions are compiled, bytecode is generated, bytecode is further interpreted and then the result is seen. Here you can see the compiler and interpreter. That is why I say Java has two stage securities. Two stage security. Then when you get into robust and secure. Mm -hmm. So robust means the applications whatever you develop using Java programming language, they are highly strong. So uh, you can write programs in such a way that uh, virus uh, attacks would be very very less. Likewise, I say secure. Secure means uh, when you get into C programming language, you might have seen some pointers concept where you can uh, access the address of a variable and the contents are, we don't have such a pointers concept and we can not refer to the memory location. So memory addresses that is why it is secure. Then platform independent. I have already told you that mm. it is platform independent that is a Java program can be written on one platform and it can be executed on other platform. Mm. An object oriented. So that's what it is based upon the real life entities. And when a programming language is on real life entities, it is easy to write applications and develop programs that would best suit the uh, real life scenarios. Mm. Then dynamic and extensible. Here dynamism, I have already given an example with that internet. Mm. And extensible in the sense a Java programming language can talk to non-Java technologies also, like C, C++, so non-Java technology, non-Java libraries, it can communicate with. That is why Java is extensible. Then multi-threaded and interactive. So here multi-threaded in the sense, uh, you can write a Java program where you have, you have put each piece representing a thread over there. So here the difference between the program, that is a process we can call it as in, term, in general. And a thread is, threads are faster in performance. Uh, in operating systems, thread, threads are executed very faster compared to processes. Here we have uh, some components in Java that would help in writing threads. So these threads are faster in performance automatically. The application that is developed using Java would give uh, good performance. And interactive, it means you can write applications that would interact with the user. For example, the you node know, that I am operating, I am trying to get you to the file menu, then save as button. You can see once I click on save as button, the application, notepad application is interacting with me. It is mm -hmm. asking for a name to that notepad. Once you provide name and click on save button, it gets saved. So you can develop such interactive applications using Java technology. Then mm -hmm. high performance. So high performance is the applications that are developed using Java technology will be performance when come application Java. Uh, for now, do you have any queries? Um, no because I would like to wind up the session. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have spent around 40 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, yes. How will the practical examples handled in your uh, sessions? 
I will I will be using uh, yes I will be using uh, the Eclipse editor. We have Eclipse Eclipse an IDE integrated development environment. We will be using Eclipse to run the Java programs. So do I need yes. to install it on my machine? Ah yes, because for your practice, uh, it would be better to install on Eclipse uh, on your machine. I will help you out uh, how to install and uh, where to get this from. It's an open source product actually, I mean Eclipse. Yeah, I know. 